Welcome to the Thursday edition of DC Today. More drama and excitement in the markets today. I'm back in the Newport Beach office and I want to first make a broader point about something to do with small cap and big cap stocks and then I'll talk about today's actual market action. There's quite a bit of um, conversation right now about whether or not the big outperformance of large cap to small cap, how small cap stocks are doing worse than than larger capitalization companies in the public stock market is indicative of the credit issues, that there's less amount of credit flowing through and small cap companies need access to credit more and therefore they're doing worse than large cap companies. I think it's a, it's a fair uh, summation, uh, uh, but I don't think it's fully accurate. I, I think if we could index small businesses, family-owned businesses, non-publicly traded, um, you know, small cap, meaning real small cap, like mom and pop family business, what we call kind of small business in our country, um, and and you were to look at that indexed, which obviously you can't do without price discovery and public trading of the values. Uh, but if you could, I think that that would look very constrained by um, essentially what has happened uh, with credit conditions and financial conditions tightening. But within the small cap space, uh, publicly traded companies, I, I, I buy the argument that there may be some who are more uh, capital dependent, although a lot of large cap companies are still very, have need great access to the um, capital markets, whether it's equity or, or bonds or what have you. And so I do wonder if it has more to do with the growth cyclicality that um, effectively what I mean is when economic growth is slowing, you expect revenue to slow. Top line sales revenues will slow. That's a highly correlated set of metrics with top line revenue and economic growth. And yet, small cap companies have less control over margins, less pricing power. So if revenues drop, earnings drop, where big cap companies, relative to small cap, have more control over margins and ability to manage either on the cost side or, or you know, uh, margin ability, what um, will happen with those revenues so as to uh, have it maintain a lesser effect in their in their profits. I think that's the case. I think small cap is more exposed, more levered to revenue growth than big cap, and revenue growth is more exposed to economic conditions. I think that's a bigger aspect than credit conditions, though. In the small cap indices, you do see a lot of these regional banks and community banks and smaller cap banks that are getting hammered. And that would be weighing on, on that aspect as well. What we do know is going into recession, small cap generally underperforms for the very reasons I've just cited. It's cyclicality uh, to, to growth. And then coming out of a recession, small cap tends to do much, much better. Every recession I've studied um, and experienced you know, as a professional investment manager, uh, that there is um, a outperformance of small cap coming out of a recession. So I don't have any words of wisdom about what kind of weighting someone wants between small cap and large cap and trying to time what will happen in the market or the economy to what will happen with small cap. I just think that some of this sort of economic commentary as to how markets and why markets are behaving the way they are is important. The other thing um, I would say is just specific to today that clearly this, this pain and distress in the regional bank world is not over. And for those watching the news, uh, Bank Pack West appears to be the next one on death's door, dropping another 50% today. It had been down 80%. Uh, already year to date, uh, they announced that they, you know, were looking at potential acquisition t possibilities and raising capital and all that. And once you go to that mode, um, it just seems to be a matter of time to start circling the drain. And we'll see what happens with this particular bank. But that was definitely the pressure on markets today. The Dow was down 286 points. It had been down a lot more. It did come back a little bit. But again, between yesterday and today, you now have seen a pretty sizable drop, and that is really related to this uh, distress and uncertainty around the ongoing pressure in the regional banks. 
So you have the S&P down 72 basis points today, the NASDAQ down half a percent, uh, the Dow down, as I mentioned, um, 286 points, which is 86 basis points, and then a really nice rally in the bond market. One thing I will point out from a yield curve standpoint is a little bit of steepening that the 10-year was down three basis points. It's sitting at 3.37% on the 10-year but you were down 16 basis points in the two years. So a huge rally higher in the price of two year bonds. So the, the bond market certainly is not worried about what the Fed's doing interest rates. I do not think it's the stock market worried about what the Fed's doing interest rates per se. I think that the market's concern about the Fed has to do with regional banks and that that becomes right now the current impediment to a little more market clarity and market uh, opportunity. That is the scoop in the DC today. Tomorrow we'll be uh, getting the unemployment report for the month of April and the Dividend Cafe is going to deal with some economic truth and it is worth your time. So I'll see you tomorrow in the Dividend Cafe. Thank you for listening, watching and reading the DC today. Mm -hmm.